Hello, 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 hello. Happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday training, you guys. We are at the end of the month. Oh my goodness, it's the end of the month. Let me just say, we've had some pretty big things happening in this group all month long. <laughs> um, I will say, I think that we are ramping up for an even bigger April. So I have my eye on some of you guys who are going to be close to promotions. I'm watching you. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to be able to get excited, get things going, drink our energy, right? And really be able to have a fantastic April. If you guys were with us last year at this time, or if you just maybe heard about it, maybe you were a Sensi customer back then, um, last April, we globally with like all Sensi consultants, we did like a unified front of active in April. And our goal was to have every single consultant at least be a minimum of active which is 200 PRV and it went off amazing. We had so many new consultants joining us. We had so many team members who maybe hadn't really been engaged but were then engaging all of a sudden um, and finding success and we had <laughs> multiple multiple promotions just within our own group, not to mention consultant wide. Okay, so we as a whole within all of us Sensi consultants, we are going to try and do that all over again in April. So it's officially been a year. Miss Kember, yes. I know Kember, I've got my eye on her. She is gonna be working on her promotion to superstar. Boom, boom. Active in April is gonna be fantastic. We are gonna be here to not only give you encouragement and share tips and ideas, but we are really here as our ultimate goal to get everybody active in April. So we're gonna be looking to you guys and we're gonna be sharing, Miss Ashley, we're gonna be sharing lots of different ways to get active in April. We're going to be learning about new things that we can be doing. We're going to really put in the, the goal, so to speak, of being consistent. So I know this has happened to me multiple times where I've literally fallen off the consistency wagon. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right if it's happened to you. It's happened to all of us at one time or another, right? It's just happened. That doesn't mean, though, that we can't get back up on the wagon and start all over again. Because that's the beautiful thing about consistency, right? You can be consistent and have life smack you in the face, or maybe you get sick. Maybe you've got some issues happening with family or friends, right? Where you just need to pull back for a second. And that pull back, I don't want you to ever feel bad if you have to do that. Because first and foremost... You are here working probably, more than likely, those of you listening to this, are working this business to better your family, yourself, your life, your whole world, right? Your bubble. And sometimes your bubble needs a little bit of self-care. And if that self-care looks like taking a step back for a minute, then take a step back. Because let me tell you right now, I have a lot of anxiety, <laughs> okay? But I can tell you in those moments that I have to take a step back, sometimes I can feel the guilt of that, right? It's like, oh, I could be doing so many things. Like I'll go and I'll lay down, either try and meditate or just listen to music and just kind of reset, right? And all I can do, because that's, that's the beauty of anxiety, right? Is all I can do is just sit there and think of all the things that I should be doing, all the things I could be doing, when instead I need to focus on me. Because if I just spent that time focusing on me, then that way I would be able to get right back up and jump right back in. It would be that much quicker. And I'm for real in this, I am not, I'm not lying. And that's simply because I've, I do it all the time, all the time. 
So don't feel shame if you have to take a step back, but one of the important lessons that we learn not only to apply in life, but to specifically apply when we're talking about our Sensi business is learn to rest, not to quit. Learn to rest, not to quit. And the really great thing about having this business and building this business is the fact that we can build systems that we can have in place for those moments that maybe we have to take a rest, right? So systems, really, if you break that down, for those of you who are newer and you're like, what the heck are you talking about, right? Systems is really just the things that we're doing in our business to propel us forward, right? There's three major parts of our business. And one is our customer sales, our personal sales, right? So we are not in the get rich quick, I'm going to go out and have 100 people join me today and then I'll get a huge paycheck because of that. No, we work for our businesses here. So we work, right? And part of that work entails our own personal sales. So we have to be concentrating on our personal sales every single month. We have to be concentrating on sponsoring and offering this opportunity to other people because that's what helps us build that strong foundation. And the third part of that is really kind of closing the gap, right? So that's not only sponsoring those people, but it's helping those people to understand and become part of this business, right? So that looks like um, getting them engaged in our Facebook groups, showing up for trainings, um, talking to them when they need help or assistance, right? So all of these things, yes, serving others, having a, a true servant mindset of our customers, our new people that we're sponsoring, and making sure that we're encompassing our, our people that we're sponsoring, right? So we're closing that gap. It just becomes this whole thing. So every single month, you're going to do the same things. You're going to focus on your personal sales. You're going to focus on sponsoring and offering the opportunity. And you're going to focus on helping your team members, the people that you are bringing in, get what they need out of this business. The very first thing that we really have to focus on when we talk about um, our team members and really closing that gap, right, is we have to make sure that we understand and know what they truly want out of this business. Because I'm here because this is my full-time job, right? My full-time job, it pays, it literally pays the bills in our home. So that's my why. Every single day when I work my business, that's my why. I got bills to pay. Mama's got to work her sensi, right? That is not the same case for everybody on my team, right? Some people may just want to do this as a hobby. Some may just want to do this to get paid on what they're already buying in Sensi, right? That's perfectly fine. That means that they're not necessarily here for all those different parts. But being able to understand what your team needs or wants this to be, then you're able to really narrow down that focus when you're working with them and making sure that if they're just here to get paid for what they're already buying in Sensi, right? To get that commission back on, on the Sensi that they love and that's all they're here for, right? Then if you sit here and message them when we have a team meeting or message them when um, you, you wanna have a coaching call with them and help them to, to sponsor new team members, right? They're gonna be like, uh-uh, sorry right? You have to be able to serve them and know what you can do to help them and what they want to accomplish. So that's really how you round out that system. Now, our systems are built around, like I said, the things that we're doing every single month on those three pieces. So a lot of us are very visual. I'm very visual, very visual. So Visual things help me learn. Visual things help keep me on track. They keep me engaged. They keep me focused. So one of the things that I really encourage you guys to do, whether it's on paper, whether it's on a notebook pad, whether it's on a post-it note that turns into a lot of post-it notes, I want you to start tracking your sales. There is a daily tracking log on the Google Drive, and that is in the announcements 
here on, on the group page, okay? So you can go to that Google Drive at any time. You can download it, print it off. If you're digital, keep it on your phone, keep it on your tablet, whatever, and use it that way. Getting into the habit of really tracking your own personal sales, it does a couple of things. For one, it builds habits. We're really big about habits around here. Habits are the things that get you to where you want to be. They're one of the vehicles we use to be able to get to those goals and dreams down the, down the line. So we really have to focus on our daily habits. So being able to make that a daily habit of at least, at the very minimum, that means you are going to your workstation and just looking at the front page, right? That's your dashboard, right? Where it shows your PRV. If, if you're still newer and you haven't hit certified, it will show like, you know, your lifetime. But ultimately, you're looking at your PRV and your GWV and your active front line. Okay, everybody's may look a little bit different, especially those who are just starting, right? So it might look a little different, but those are the main things that you're really looking at. Now, you may ask yourself, what is Active Frontline? What does that mean? That is the people that you have personally sponsored. And if they are active, why does that mean a big deal? Because in order for you to promote, to lead, to star, to superstar, and to director, star director, and superstar director, right? You have to have a minimum active frontline to not only be paid at those titles, but to promote to those titles, okay? So that's what we're really focusing on. So if we're focusing on those things, if those are our focus points, then we can build systems to say, okay, well, I've only got one active frontline, I need two. What can I do? to help my team to get active, or at least one more person to get active. Ideally, right, we want everybody to get active, right? Simply because that means they're working their business, okay? They're talking to people, they're having conversations, they're posting on social media, they may be having online parties, they may be doing events, whatever it is, right? They're doing something, they're doing something if they're at least active. So, Miss Kylie, hello, double promotion Kylie. I'm just going to make that your, your forever nickname now. Double promotion, Kylie. So these systems that we focus on are going to be those daily habits, right? So one of those, again, tracking where you're at. And it may seem silly if it's something that you've never done before. I personally instituted this for myself. It was before I hit director, I know that. Maybe about a year before I hit director, because I, I was not the fast person in this game, right? Um, I didn't really know what my focus was. I didn't intend to initially be doing this as my full-time income, right? I didn't. So my focus was not on these things. I had to really teach myself how to do this. I had to teach myself how to focus and what was important really in my business, because that's the key, right? We can do a whole bunch of things all day long, but if it's really not moving our business forward, then it really is just wasted time. And sadly enough, we've all fallen into that trap. So you're not alone if you've fallen into that trap. But I started tracking my own numbers, like I said, about a year-ish before I even hit director. Because I wanted to know what, did my month look like every single month, right? It's no surprise, I've said it a million times, I am not like the highest PRV seller in the world. I'm just not. Hopefully one day, I'll get there. Cherry, no worries, yes, you can always catch the replay. It will be here for you, my dear. Being able though, to start tracking those things can help you to see maybe trends of what's happening, right? So maybe you can look. One of the things that I noticed, Miss Terry, when I started actually tracking my numbers every day, one thing that I really, really noticed that stood out to me is that I found that the majority of the PRV that I did every single month was done within like the first two weeks. And then I noticed that after those last, or you know, during those last two, maybe three, depending on the month, weeks of the month, right? my PRV kind of 
slowly but surely just trailed off into nothing. So what did that tell me? That told me that whatever I'm doing is working. So what can I do during those first two weeks that are that is getting me that PRV and maybe I could push out to those other two weeks? What else can I add? What can I be doing or what am I not doing rather for, for the end of the month? What I found is that in, in, again, this is just my business, so your business may look completely different. I happen to do a lot of videos on YouTube, right? So I do a lot of unboxing videos. So I found that a lot of that PRV was coming from whenever I would unbox the new warmer or scent of the month, right? People would get, would get excited to watch that. Now we get sales from that. I also found that, that I was able to really pinpoint that my marketing, I was really consistent with my marketing at the beginning of the month. When it came to towards the end of the month, the second half of every month, I tended to not be as consistent or as intentional as I was at the beginning. Why? Because normally, you know, once you hit lead and go above lead, right, your goal needs to be at least a minimum of 500 PRV because that is how you get paid a title, right, and promote. So I found that when I would hit that 500, maybe the middle of the month, by the middle of the month I hit my 500, then it was just like my brain was like, Psh, okay, that one's done, moving on to the next thing. And that was completely wrong, right? Like I needed to change something. And the only reason I realized I needed to change that was because I was able to track or I was tracking those numbers every day to be able to see a trend. Does that make sense? So if you start these things, they will become habits because it's just science. If you do something for like, what is it? 21, 28 days in a row, it becomes a habit, right? Before too long, you just end up doing it without even thinking about it. One of those things for me is writing down my daily numbers. Now, I happen to just do mine on, on the iPad now, but it's fine. I still have all my notebooks from all of those years of when I did it in the notebooks. Every single day, wrote it down, wrote it down, wrote it down, wrote it down. So one of the very first things that I do every single day is I write down my numbers. I log into the workstation, I look at that dashboard, I write down my numbers. Kimber working towards annual mentor and not annual sales. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna stop you there, Kimber, because I'm gonna say shoot for both. Shoot for both because it is totally possible, right? Totally possible to do both. Both are extremely important in Sensi as a whole. Huge accomplishments. Okay. Also, by doing that, you also get a nice bonus. That's very nice, right? Hello. We all love that extra money. But while it's good to want maybe one over the other, you know, you know what I'm going to say. You know, I'm going to say you got to work for both. What's one of those quotes? You shoot for the moon and you might fall among the stars. That's okay, right? You have to keep those goals big. You have to keep those goals scary because if it's not scaring you, then it's not big enough, right? That goal needs to be annual mentor, annual sales. So for people who are of that mind of, I want to make this into a full-time income, these are the things that you're gonna wanna work towards. Ashley might have another person joining. Yes, look at Ashley building that team. She has been doing amazing things, you guys. She did her first vendor event. She's been sponsoring new team members. So do you see how her actions alone are showing that she is doing the things every single month, right? Yes, Kimber, you are shooting for both. You're shooting for both. Because again, we're gonna keep those those goals and and our focus big Your dog is ridiculous. <laughs> we're gonna keep those goals big and scary because those are the things that are gonna push us right those are the things that are gonna make us okay when I work my business 
I got that goal. All right, I'm gonna make samples and send those out. Or I got a goal. All right, I gotta track my numbers. I gotta see where I'm at, okay. I got a goal. I'm gonna have more conversations about people joining my team. I've got a goal. I'm going to post on social media um, the new products that we've got releasing, right? You see what I'm saying? So everything that we do, we have systems. And like I said, you may not recognize them as systems, but they really are systems. And I will say this while we're on the track of systems is that while we have systems for everything, there really is no right or wrong way to have them. So however it is that you're doing things and if it is working for you, like Ashley's are working for her, right? I can see the progress within Ashley. She needs to continue doing what she's doing, right? Because it's working, right? It's when things start to stale or, or fall off or just flatline, that's when you need to say, hey, I, I need to try something new. I need to shift my perspective. I need to pivot and I need to try, try something else because I've been trying to get people to join my team and it's not working. Nobody's joining my team. Okay, well, then we got to try something new. That's what that means. That is exactly right, Kylie. The big scary monster always eventually turns into a celebration waiting to happen. I love that quote. I love that. And you are the epitome of that. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And that really is true because in this business specifically, you know, when I had my full-time J-O-B, when I was working 40 to 50 hours a week, in corporate America, which was supposed to be the dream, right? I can tell you, I was not happy every day. <laughs> I didn't get a celebration when I finished what I was needing to do that day. It was always Sensi that gave me that feeling of accomplishment, that gave me that feeling of community, that gave me that feeling of, I'm making a difference. I'm driving this horse, right? So, all in all, we are in control of our destiny. The hard work that we put in, the consistent work that we do every day, every week, every month, the follow-ups that we're doing with our customers, whether it's a handwritten note, whether it's a text, whether it's this huge, beautiful, happy mail party pack thing, no matter what it looks like, those are the things that are going to get you to where you need to be. Those are the things that are going to make those huge, scary monster dreams turn into those celebrations. Because I know that, that a lot of us hear this a lot. Nobody's buying Sensi. I keep posting. Nobody wants to buy. Nobody wants to join my team. I keep asking. Nobody wants to join. That means we gotta change it up. We have to change what we're doing because something isn't working. So you can look at your systems, you can look at your trends, especially if you start writing down your numbers every day. And you can see maybe one month you had amazing and your, your team, your team members also did amazing. So that's something that you can look back at and go, okay, how, what was working that month? that we all did amazing. Like my PRV was awesome and my team was awesome. We had a couple promotions and what was the magic piece during that, that month? Those are the ways that we grow as leaders. Those are the ways that we are able to serve our team, serve our customers. And when we talk about servant leadership and servant mindset, we also have to look at ourselves too. We can't pour from an empty cup, right? If, if you're completely burned out, if you're stressed out, if, if you've got things happening, again, learn to rest, not to quit. And while you're resting, those systems that you have in place can be working for you. It's one of the great things that I love about having this business, right? I love my social media, you guys know this. Instagram is my jam. That's where I, I spend the majority of my time. Um, I really like it. Obviously, YouTube. I like YouTube as well, right? 
One of the things that I found that was kind of an eye opener to me was being able to repurpose my own content. Now, a lot of strategists in social media will say this is one of the key rules that you do. And I have to kind of agree with that because I'm somebody who I'm always looking for that new, cool, creative way to either share on social or get noticed or whatever, right? I always am. And I always will be. That's just, that's just how I roll. That's how I work, right? But being able to have the systems in place to be able to repurpose your own content is going to save you a lot of time because let me tell you as much as I like to think I'm so creative there are days there are times when I don't feel so creative and maybe I don't have new content to put out maybe I don't have a maybe I haven't taken any pictures of warmers in my house maybe I haven't done any any cool things lately what I can do is go back through the content that has previously done well and repost it. There's no shame in that. There's no, oh, well, I've seen that before, right? That, you're the only one who's really going to know in, in the end, right? <laughs> because we're harder on ourselves because we know what we've done, right? Let me tell you, your social media audience does not care if they've seen it once or twice, if it was good content. So again, looking at the trends, you can do this in a lot of different ways, depending on what your medium is, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's YouTube, whatever, right? What had the most likes? What got the most uh, comments? What got, what got great comments, right? Either repurpose that content or do something similar to that content because you already know that that is a winning strategy with your followers. This is huge, you guys. When I really allowed myself to take that in, oh my gosh, on those days when I didn't feel so creative, on those days when I just was not feeling it and I needed to pull back and rest, that's when I would repurpose that content that did so well. And I was still able to have that consistent social media presence for my business. Because at the end of the day, consistency, consistency wins the race, right? Y'all remember the turtle and the hare, right? Who really won? The turtle, because that turtle was consistent. An amazing analogy with Sensi and your business. I don't care if you join today and in three months, you're a superstar director. I don't care if you joined eight years ago and you're a lead consultant. I don't care if you joined two years ago and you're a director. I don't care what your timeline is. The purpose of being able to have your own business is you are the one in control. You are the one setting the speed limit and you're the one doing it. So everybody's journey is gonna look completely different. Nobody's journey looks the same. Some people are going to be slower. Some people might be faster. But at the end of the day, the turtle, the consistency is the one that wins. So find those ways that you can be consistent. Find those things that will be able to help keep you going in the times that you may not necessarily feel like going. Been there, done that. That's exactly right, Kylie. Being able to utilize sample posts, and we're very lucky that Tracy, our superstar director, does some really amazing work by giving us those. If you need ideas, hey, you guys, come on now. We, we always say too, right? The people that we surround ourselves, the things that we are focusing on are the things that we're going to manifest, right? So if you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people, if you're surrounding yourself with people who want to make a difference, who want to build a business, who want to do all of these things, right? Then you're going to start picking up on the cues of what these other people are doing. And that's going to help you so very much. Now, here within our group, especially 
by all means, we are all here to share ideas, to share tips, to share things that are working. So if it's working for somebody else, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. Now, I do not recommend copying somebody else's work word for word or what have you, right? I want you to put your own spin on it, but it doesn't mean that you can't use the idea and make it your own, right? So if you see somebody who constantly is putting out really cute posts or gets great engagement, figure out how you can make that you, right? How can you duplicate that and you in your brand? Because those are great ways that you're able to get that inspiration. It's really wonderful. Yes, the law of attraction. It is real, 100%. And yeah, thinking outside the box is great. It is great. It is a really great way to grow. It's a great way to, again, focus in on those goals. To really take a step back and look at the big picture, right? Again, it all comes back to, you know, tracking things keeping track of things. And I know it sounds maybe a little simple, maybe a little redundant, maybe even ridiculous. You're like, I don't understand what you're talking about, what this is going to mean for me just to track things. But trust me, <laughs> I come from the world of analytics. And if anything has taught me throughout all of those college courses I paid for that I'm just not using anymore, it's the simple fact of taking stock of what has worked and building upon those pieces, looking to see where were the dips, what were the months that you just didn't do so great or weren't working as well for you. Okay, what were you doing? Remind yourself not to do those things again and then focus back on the things that were going really well during the times or months or weeks or what have you that worked well for your business. And you're going to do those things consistently, right? You're going to fill that, that gap. You're going you're gonna to really make sure that every single month that you're going to be doing these things time and time again. You're going to be having conversations. You're going to be posting on social media. Y'all, this is, I, I mean, if you're not in the world of social media, if you just still haven't caught the bus and you're like, uh, not a social media person, you don't have to be, um, amazing at all the social media, right? Just because maybe you don't do well doing making videos or creating a TikTok or something like that, right? It that does, does not mean that you just aren't going to do well in social media. So you just have to find what works for you. And again, right, we're going to try things that maybe make us a little bit uncomfortable, but don't be afraid to not only ask for help, or to look at the people who are doing those things well that you want to learn. Or, hello, this is how I learn to do the things that I do when I'm trying to figure something out. I YouTube it, you guys. <laughs> we live in a world where everything is YouTubeable. That is now a word, YouTubeable. So, I even tell Madison when she's working on schoolwork or something and she's like, I don't know how to do this. YouTube it. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> I wanted to figure out how to use mail merge. I haven't used mail merge in forever. Like years. I had to watch a quick YouTube video. I'm not ashamed of that, right? I just need to know how to do it. So you just learn how to do it. <laughs> Write a list of things that you want to try and do or things that you just haven't quite figured out. YouTube it. I guarantee you, you'll find some video. Some videos might be better than others, but you get the you get the point, right? We're going to try and do those things that we maybe didn't think that we could do. <laughs> YouTube. So, as we get ready for our movement in April, maybe look back on this past month, what has worked well, what hasn't hasn't worked well. What are some things that you want to try or that you want to start doing in your business, right? Make yourself a list. We've got today and tomorrow and we start a whole new month, right? So we want that month to be spectacular. And I can tell you right now, you're going to see the focus all over Facebook, 
all over social media when it comes from Scentsy that our movement in April is to have everybody active. So start preparing yourself now. Start getting ready. Start mentally getting ready. Maybe you can do some pre-work along the way, right? Today and tomorrow. Maybe that means making up some samples to get them ready to go. Maybe that means um, jotting down some notes on follow-ups that you want to be able to do. Or again, making notes of things that you want to work on for next month. You want to get better at. You want to learn more about it. These are the things that are going to get us to where we want to be. So you got to train your brain. You got to put that focus in and you got to remember the important pieces that we need to focus on. And yes, if you haven't already join the monthly movement group, there's going to be tons of ideas in there. Okay. Tons. So you can find that on Facebook. If you need help, reach out to us here in the group and we will help find that group for you. If you're just, if you've been typing it in, you just can't find it. Don't hesitate. That's what we're here for is to help you out. All right, guys, that's what I got for you this Tuesday. It's the last Tuesday of March. When I see you again, it's going to be April. So get ready to have fun. Get ready to kick some butt going forward in April. We're going to do big things. Write down your goals. Where do you want to be this time next month? Think about it. Where do you want that paycheck to be? Do you want to be able to sit back and say, hey, I sponsored two new people. Hey, I had really amazing PRV. Hey, I'm getting paid a title. Hey, I'm close to a promotion. Do you want these things? Then we got to make a plan. Write it down. Make a plan. And then we're going to execute. We got this. All right, guys. I'll see you next month. <laughs>